Well, hello and welcome and welcome and hello. Thank you for tuning in to another exciting edition of Un Poco Moss, the show where we give you just a little bit more on behalf of Hurricane Lopez and Stock Karen. We would like to welcome you to today's broad broadcast. It is August 9th, 2023. It is 5 p.m. out here in beautiful Los Angeles. Aftermarket has just closed. Um, the SoFi stock was down 32 cents on the day at $8.99 and was down another wooden nickel after hours. So a loss of about four points on the day. Um, counting the aftermarket, uh, rough one today, guys. Um, not wholly unexpected. Um, there was a huge um, draw on the stock. I Not a huge draw, but from the upstart earnings, that stock lost 35% uh, on the day. So a firm was just down uh, about 2%. Um, but some other stocks like Palantir got hit for, uh, you know, 10.5%. So overall on the uh, continuum of the growth stocks, uh, SoFi really held up pretty well. Um, I was going to buy, uh, b again, below $8.91. I believe that's a uh, critical, um, you know, sort of a level for the stock. Um, people are very worried, you know, the stock's going to break down back below 7 I think 8 is very safe, and I'm not even sure the stock is going to go um, much further down from these levels. Guys, today, 40 million shares traded. Um, that's a pretty good sign. Uh for some bulls coming back into the stock. Obviously, there was a lot of profit taking um, after their after the huge pump from five and then the earnings pump and dump. Um, you know, there was a lot of selling, just a lot of selling pressure in general. I think a lot of your swing turders thought the party was over and um, they just decided to move along. So guys, options, the volume is not huge. I'm sure some people have given up already, but um, there's looks like 10,000 calls at nine or in the toilet, uh, 15,000 calls or 13,000 calls at 950, even further in the toilet. And um, those uh, 4,500 calls out at 10 bucks um, may as well be the, uh, you know, hot stinking garbage stuck to the bottom of a dumpster because those calls are going to expire worthless, I can assure you. Um, in any case, guys, let's take a look at the uh, stock chart here. People who are saying, you know, the rally is over and the uptrend is over and the stock is definitely, you know, going to break back down and go down below eight. Um, personally, guys, this level of eight, I think, is is pretty darn safe. Um, you know, the stock has challenged that level uh, twice. Of course, it broke back down below, but it it stayed good on this trend line. We see that that first big pump here. Um, into the tens, the stock reacts back down to the trend line. And guys, this is kind of a midpoint I put in here um, for this uh, sort of range we're trending into that's getting a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter um, as the stock moves up, of course. Um, we pumped above that and then hung out below that for basically a, what looks like a W, if you guys can see that. Um, and then it goes above and it makes basically what looks like an M if you take away, you know, this pump and dump, which this stock, guys, was not ready um, to go up into the 11s that quickly. Don't forget, we were just at five a couple of months ago, um, breaking out of this range that decisively to, uh, you know, the 1150 level. It's just it's just not good charting, guys. It's just not good price action. It's not sustainable. Um, you're not going to get 120 million share day where everyone's buying the stock because, I mean, let's face it, guys. I like the ER. I like that SoFi prioritizes, you know, growth over immediate earnings, but... You know, the encouraging part was, as a ratio, the membership growth increased back to 10 from 8, and 10 was where it had been the last couple of quarters. Uh, there was a lot of encouraging things. Um, Galileo adding new accounts. Uh, the amount of deposits were certainly probably, you know, the most encouraging thing, and how well SoFi is doing on direct deposit, um, how low the defaults continue to be on uh, their personal loans, all their loan products, how they were able to sell different types of loans above par value on the secondary market uh, seemingly without issue. So a lot of what SoFi's management has been telling us um, was borne out this latest uh, ER. The problem was, guys, just the EPS. I mean, you know, you're getting more revenue, you're getting more EBITDA, you're getting more uh, profit, supposedly, but because the share count is growing, 
um, every single quarter by, you know, about $75 million worth, um, the earnings per share have basically been flat the last three quarters. And that is not like gangbuster for your growth story. So, you know, some of the data points in this ER were very, very good for the growth story. Other data points in the ER said, yes, while the company is growing, it's not becoming more profitable, you know, on a, sh on a per EPS basis, which, you know, you just can't argue with that guys. And management is basically saying like, we're setting this all up. All of our business segments will be profitable by the end of 2023. We will make a gap net profit in Q4 of 2023 and for the full year of 2024. And I think you just have to decide, uh, do you trust management to continue to execute and continue to deliver the numbers they promise? Um, when I look at this chart, I don't see an uptrend um, that's over. I don't see anything convincing me that this is going to continue to fall all the way down um, below $8 or anything like that. Um, I like it to, you know, uh, of course, guys, people are like, well, it depends. What, what does the Fed do? What is all, it depends on the overall market. You you know, the trend is your friend. You can't, you can't fight. Of course, guys, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that if the market, you know, completely falls apart on horrible economic news or some type of geopolitical news, just because uh, SoFi, you know, turned in more membership growth and a little bit more uh, adjusted net revenue and EBITDA than people were expecting. That just means SoFi is going to go up while the rest of the market gets slammed. That That's not true, guys. SoFi is not earning money. Um, we don't have legitimate EPS multiples to value the stock. So basically, you know, when you're talking about growth stocks, you're valuing the growth. You're valuing uh, the anticipated future cash flows, but at this point, those are you know purely speculative, and you know it's really sort of a matter of faith, but based upon a lot of evidence um, with management. You're like, well, why is this broken down below this trend line? Don't forget, this trend line is going up at a pretty quick slope, and so we have been making higher lows. Um, not this time, though. I this low is a little bit questionable because it's a setup for the pump, and then. I look at it this way, guys, this, this sort of blue line here, that's like the midpoint in this range of where this stock's been trading since, oh, beginning of June. Uh, so I don't know, about 10 weeks or so. Um, this blue line being sort of the midpoint where things tend to balance. Um, when you have this huge pump at the end of July, um, second day of uh, 1st of August, it goes ahead and sells off, obviously, and then gaps down even further um, back to 10. Um, so it's not going to surprise me, guys, if this breaks down a little bit below the trend line, um, even somewhat significantly, and then recovers uh, very, very quickly. Um, guys, look at what we see coming off of this uh, trend line, you know, repeatedly. Huge green candle here on uh, June 23rd. Huge green candle here on July 10th. So, you know, you have oh, three weeks uh, between those candles. And then all the way out here, guys, we've been consolidating in this range besides the pump and dump, you know, for another five weeks. And um, this is kind of, um, you know, going to be very telling um, next week or so for the SoFi stock because, I think this is going to tell us where is the market going? Where is the stock going? Is this going to be recognized as a best in breed fintech and not trade with some of these other, you know, more payday loan companies, companies without a bank charter? SoFi is a better fintech. It is a better diversified business. It is a better run business. They're e able to weather um, any types of economic conditions, any types of regulatory environments. Um, SoFi has been extremely adaptive and extremely uh, adept in terms of pivoting very, very quickly to continue to grow revenues and uh, march closer and closer to profit. Uh, a company like Upstart, their revenues just continue to fall and people are making a big deal that they made a little bit of net profit. Guys, what good does that do you? Why, why do you want, you know, why do you want a net profit by a company that's supposed to be a growth stock where, you know, their revenues are basically pitiful and, um, you know, SoFi has got over three times the revenue of an upstart. Um, and the fact that SoFi is still growing their top line, growing their user base means a hell of a lot more to me 
at this stage in the game than just a small gap net profit. I mean, you're not going to get a dividend. That could, it doesn't mean anything, guys. You're looking to the future. That's what you're looking to with a stock like this. Noto keeps saying, you know, we're going to be a top 10 uh, financial institution. Those market caps start in the hundreds of billions. So you're talking about like a 13x just to get there. And he's talking about doing it in the next 10 years. So if that's the kind of growth you want and that kind of time horizon, you're looking people, I, I like people who are like, well, you could just buy anything over five years. It goes up like, hey, buy and hold five, 10 years. What are you, some kind of genius? Like, guys, no, that is actually how you make money is you find a quality stock that is going to give you a lot of growth and you just buy it and you just hold it. I mean, it, it is not rocket science. Uh, people that are investing in the stock market should be investing with a long-term horizon. It is not a good vehicle to get rich quick. If you want to do that, go out and buy that super lotto guys. It's at like 1.6 billion. Um, you'd be better off than trying to get rich quick in the stock market because it just doesn't work. And, um, you know, people talk about, Oh, you buy some pennies. Yes, I do buy some penny stocks. I find it fun, um, with money that I can afford to lose, but I do not expect those to provide for my retirement. It's, it is more of a lottery ticket. Um, but I do a lot of research and stuff too. So I feel like I have an edge, but guys, overall, long-term investing is your friend. That's what you want to do. Because if you have too quick a sample size and you're moving in and out, you're just going to overreact. The stock's going to go down, but the thesis is going to remain intact. And you're going to go, uh oh, the price is going down. I'm going to sell. And then the price goes back up and you're like, uh oh, I'm missing out FOMO. I'm going to buy. And then it starts to go down again. And you just get into this vicious cycle where you're buying high and selling low. You're you know, selling the dip and smelling the rip as it were. And that's not what you want to do. You don't want to smell that rip guys. You want to be invested during the rip. I um, want to take you over to seeking alpha. Of course, one of my favorite uh, sites for analysis, August 9, 2023, JR research. Um, if you guys uh, know seeking alpha, JR research uh, puts out some pretty good material, very measured. He's actually downgraded the uh, SoFi stock not too long ago, but has changed his tune decidedly. Um, SoFi, the bearish thesis is dissipating and deservedly so. SoFi investors saw SoFi's mass massive earnings surge disappear as sellers capitalized to take profits. Again, not shocking there, guys, when a stock runs up. Um, with that ferocity, you are going to have the short-term people coming in and uh, just trying to take profits off the table, which is fine, guys, shouldn't worry you. However, I assess the buyers are expected to return soon to defend. Pardon me. The company remains on track to achieve gap net income profitability end of Q4 2023, justifying its robust execution. The business model is working, gains new product, members, higher income depositors and borrowers, student loan tailwinds are expected to provide another substantial boost to SoFi's earnings in 2024. And I would submit that we need to see interest rates come down a bit. I don't think student loans are going to be a huge boost um, at these interest rates, particularly if we get another bump or two. But um, we shall see on that one. With SoFi's bearish thesis weakening, I don't expect the short sellers to have another blistering run against buyers. This is where I'm at, guys. Like, normally stocks are shorted for a reason because they're executing poorly. They have a bad business model. Their management is doing stupid things. Um, they're getting away from the core of what they do. Like none of these things apply to SoFi. SoFi is executing well, not perfectly by any means. Um, they're not making a net profit yet. There's, there's things they could be doing better. Um, there is a lot of stock-based compensation. Um, it is yet to be determined how well some of their acquisitions are going to pan out. So I'm by no means somebody who says, hey, it's a virtual certainty. SoFi is going to be the greatest investment in the history of the world and going to be a t There is no certainty, guys. There's a lot of years of execution, of strategy um, left, left ahead of us. And, you know, companies have to continue to execute. In sports, I say, hey, that's why they play the games. It's not enough just to have a good model and good management and have the ball rolling in the right direction. You have to continue to show up every single day, every single month, every single quarter, every single year and execute year after year after year. And only when Anthony Noto does that and continues to do that, are we really going to be rewarded as uh, SoFi investors? Um, so let's go. He downgraded SoFi in June, anticipated underperformance from financial services player, However, SoFi outperformed. The outperformance was lifted by SoFi's earnings surge after a solid uh, Q2 earnings release. However, sellers have capitalized astutely on the momentum spike. SoFi's given up the gains, 
returning to its pre-earnings price levels, and in fact, uh, lower at this point uh, since he wrote this article. Holders would assess whether there is potential for further downside, attracting more early dip buyers to take profit. Before we go into that, must be noted that uh, Noto um, registered a solid release, which, but it was likely anticipated. Stressed the positive market sentiments, indicating that the dip buyers were justified in buying SoFi at its lows in the first half of 2023. Um, yeah, you think uh, SoFi under five bucks, that's a screaming buy in my book, and it has been uh, numerous times. Accordingly, the company outperformed analyst estimates for Q2, also raised guidance and adjusted net revenue and EBITDA. It actually just met guidance basically for earnings per share, but as such, the digital finance company remains on track to deliver gap net income profitability. End of Q4 2023, accentuating the worst in its operating performance is likely over. Um in addition, SoFi's financial services loop is working robustly as it posted significant gains in new products and members. However, the products to members ratio 1.5 suggests it's still early in members cross-buying momentum. I would agree with that, guys. The business model has barely had a chance to start working. We're just getting there. We're just reaching that critical mass. Um, we're just reaching some type of scale where we can actually see the benefits of this business model of our acquisitions. I think we have, you know, some time to go, guys. I think probably 2025, SoFi is going to be absolutely humming and the share price will have taken off and it will be uh, too late for buyers to get a bargain on the SoFi stock. But again, time will tell. I have no crystal ball and I don't know what's going to happen. Management's commentary indicates that SoFi's business model is working. All their business segments will be profitable 2023. Focus on higher income depositors and borrowers. Baking segment also gained invaluable tailwind, attracted high quality deposits. Deposit base increased 12.7 billion, suggesting members' trust and confidence in SoFi. Assessed investors likely to benefit from the doubt, as investors didn't allow SoFi to collapse back to the lows of the first half of 2023. In addition, the anticipated resumption of student loan financing from Q4 2023 should further boost. The earnings accretion, 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 I don't know how the hell to say that, from FY24. However, the significant growth in SoFi's personal loan business could slow the FY2024 as blistering spit. So he goes in, my sell bearish underperform rating in June didn't pan out. While the near term downside of SoFi's post earnings purge is welcome as sellers took profit, I anticipate more constructive buying sentiments moving ahead. Notably, SoFi has regained its medium-term bullish bias, suggesting short sellers are expected to have difficulty justifying their thesis with high conviction. I agree, guys. I think this, I've made numerous videos about that very recently. The short thesis is absolutely nonsense, and the earnings report basically destroyed it. Um, do they have the conviction to just reshort the hell out of this thing? Um, they're already at 14% plus, guys, closer to 15% as a short interest to the free float. Now, shares on loan are way, way down. That's because um, companies are short long. So they're hedging their short position um, with long shares or vice versa. They're hedging their long shares with a, a short position. So they're trying to make money essentially no matter what happens. Um, SoFi's valuation C minus on seeking alpha quant suggests it isn't aggressively configured. Uh, dip buyers could return above 760 as annotated in the chart. Hence, with near-term pullback should be anticipated, the bearish thesis on SoFi is looking increasingly weak. It's weak. You're weak, turds. Um, leading me to expect SoFi to perform at least in line with the market at current levels. I may consider a more aggressive thesis if I see a deeper pullback subsequently. So he is a hold on the stock, but it's very important if you read um, his very bearish article in June when he was downgrading the SoFi stock, he's basically acknowledging what a lot of the bears and shorts and turds um, such as David Chiaverini, the bologna sandwich, and others, um, you know, Morgan Stanley. They're basically, he's acknowledging he was wrong, and he's acknowledging the data didn't bear out what he suggested was going to happen. And, you know, but good on you for doing that, because that's what actually happened and um, should be acknowledged. Guys, the short interest, um, again, cost to borrow max today, guys, was uh, 14%. And so... You know, the the pundits, the talking heads, the powers that be are going to tell you there's so many shares. There's just a flood of shares. It's so easy to cover. Well, why is cost to borrow max over 14%, guys? That doesn't happen very often with the SoFi stock, particularly when they're returning more shares than they're borrowing, um, in theory. I, I just don't think these numbers make any sense. Estimated short interest to the free float is almost 15%. Free float on loan is only 9%. Uh, percent. So there's... Um, you know, there's 50 million shares kind of sitting there uh, unaccounted for, sort of uncovered, unborrowed, and um, those are your short long uh, players. And again, just take a look, guys, at the um, 
at these numbers, and this is a little bit staggering, but um, short interest value, three months, up 88%. Now, the, that's based on the fact that the value of the stock has gone way up. But the estimated short interest of free float is 16%. That's up 6%. Free float on loan, down 61%. Shares on loan, down 60%. Days to cover, down 77%. Okay, utilization, down 75%. Cost to borrow, only down 17%. Guys, the, the shares to short, the shares to borrow are very, very scarce but they're not they're not trying to borrow those shares um they they have their own shares at least that's what i'm reading on this um as far as the options go again um it doesn't look like they're doing a pump and dump on the options this week it just looks like you know it's full out attacking the stock um i believe that short interest is going to tick up as we watch it um again at 15% guys this is you know matches the highest uh, short interest we've seen on uh the SoFi stock since September of 2022. So this is a very aggressive short after, you know, three more quarters of very solid uh, execution. But I think again, people, they're buying the growth story, but I don't think they're buying the cost of that growth. I think they're basically saying SoFi's buying members, those individual members aren't bringing in on average that much money. They're not bringing in anywhere near enough to make a profit. And so I think you know, the growth story has been proven and it's been intact in terms of the membership growth, the product growth, the deposit growth. But I think the growth story that's missing is the earnings per share. You know, Jack and Jill went up the hill. Um, you know, tell me the end of the story and show me the end of the story. And the end of the story, I want to see SoFi making a ton of profit. But we just haven't gotten to that part of the book yet. And the uh, turds are still able to mess around with the stock I believe we are still in that uptrend, guys. That's just, you know, it's just my opinion. Um, if you look at the one day, um, this isn't that bad, guys. I mean, this is that trend line that we've been running across. Obviously, uh, during the day, went all the way down to like 880. That broke down. But again, recovered extremely quickly. Came back down, tested that trend line here and hung on and then up and then back down through it. I think we're going to regain this trend line, guys, but it all depends on what happens in the overall market, the financials, the fintech, interest rates, government policy, uh, so many things just out of the hands of the company, and we are at the mercy of uh, other people, other forces, other entities. So all you can do, guys, is buy quality, buy uh, at good entry points, buy dips, and hold for the long term. SoFi is a long-term winner in my book, but... Um, in the short term, guys, of course, prices can go down. Always do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor. I barely even know what I'm talking about. I did not even sleep at a holiday in last night. So, guys, it's a SoFi stock. It's August 9, 2023. It's 5.25 p.m. The stock is sitting at $8.94 on volume that has increased. Again, we were all the way down into the 28 million shares traded range yesterday. 32 the day before that, I think, you know, 38 before that, 42 before that. So with uh, 40 million shares traded, we see volume again uh, picking up uh, significantly. And you can see that um, right over here. Yeah, we were, um, I, I just remember because I looked this not long ago. It was trading 62 million, 37, 42, then 31, then 28. So um, volume had been uh, decelerating significantly. So we're back up to where we were. Um, three days ago, and that is a good sign. Um, doesn't prove the stock is turning bullish or continuing in an uptrend, but certainly uh, more volume is always um, good for the bulls. Guys, that's the SoFi stock. Ticker symbol is SOFI. My name is Danny Deals. The show is Un Poco Moss. Um, should be an exciting next couple of days to see which way the market's going to break. Obviously, we've been getting uh, ham hammered. Um, this week so far, but uh, tomorrow's a new day, and we'll see you then. You guys have a great night. Peace.